Hello again, it's Cliff here from Down Under. In this video I'm going to talk about lever style dial indicators. I mean of the three most commonly used tools for precision machining and tool making would be the 0-6 inch digital vernier, 0-150mm, 0-1 inch micrometer, 0-25mm and the lever or finger style indicator. You know, in precision machining, those three instruments are just used all day. So I want to talk about lever indicators. And you'll be familiar with the plunger type indicator, which is a very good instrument for measuring uh, linear dimensions, but it's not so convenient and versatile as the lever indicator. The lever indicator comes in two main forms with the face in that orientation to the stylus and the other form is with the face in that orientation to the stylus and that's very good for dialing in bores because the face never goes out of view but this type of indicator is the best format for clocking up work in the lathe and for setting your vice up and that type of job. So these are used all the time. And um, uh, if you're doing a lot of precision machining, you will be wondering if you don't already have a dial indicator, should I go for a good quality uh, Chinese indicator? Uh, You've got to be careful of the low quality ones, but there are some good quality China, Chinese indicators. Or should I go for a higher end Swiss or Japanese Mitutoyo type of indicator? Um, so I'll go over the relative merits and have a bit of a look into uh, quality versus low price. All right, cheers. Well, in this video, we're going to compare a reasonably good quality Chinese lead lever indicator, the Shahi. I've got a Shahi micrometer, and it's better than the average uh, cheap Chinese micrometer. I've read several reviews online, and they they are quite highly rated. They're more expensive than the cheapest um, Chinese uh, measuring instruments, but they are a lot cheaper than Swiss or Japanese. And we're going to also compare it with the Gyro Test, the Swiss lever dial indicator, and the Mitutoyo uh, made in Japan. And the interesting thing is with these reviews, and there's lots of reviews online doing various tests, um, what should we be measuring? I mean, a, a lever indicator is primarily a comparative measuring device, a comparator. It, it isn't measuring accurately linear measurement. It's used for dialing in uh, vices and uh, work in a lathe and so on. Um, it's a very quick and easy way, a convenient measuring instrument for clocking up bores and diameters and parallel surfaces. So we should be testing it for a consistency and longevity, how hard wearing it is. They're the key things, um, and ease of use rather than accuracy of measurement, uh, because it's a comparator primarily. So um, w one of the key things is how long will it last? Well, I've had this Swiss gyro test, and in US dollars, if you were to get it, uh, on a reasonably good price from an industrial supplier. I, I imagine it would be around about $100. Um, I've had it for decades and used it uh, thousands of times a year, and it's still going strong. Will the Shahi, Chinese made, good quality, uh, last that long? I, I just don't know. This is a new indicator. Um, probably not, but you know, who knows for sure. Um, it, it doesn't have dual bearings, whereas the Swiss does. Um, I know the Swiss indicator lasts a long time. I don't know the Chinese does. But on the other hand, it's about a quarter of the price, probably 20 or 25 US dollars. And the Mitutoyo is somewhere in between. So um, with that in mind, I'll, I'll just do a series of inspections, have a think about 
what would be a good option for people buying their first dial indicator. I think one thing to consider is if you're going to be using it a lot and it's your one and only lever dial indicator, I think you can justify a reasonably good instrument, especially if you're enthusiastic about quality. Um, on the other hand, you could buy four of the Shahi indicators for about the same price as the Swiss indicator. Uh, probably the number one job for a, a dial indicator in a machine shop, and for this job, a, a finger indicator or a lever indicator is ideal. It's just uh, dialing in your vice uh, or your job or uh, getting your part running true in the lathe. So, you know, the process, you just nip up one side, have the other side loose, come into contact, traverse a distance, we're going clockwise about 0.1 of a millimeter over that distance, tap off with a block of copper, traverse back, and you can see now it's pretty right. Nip it up on that side, double check, and we have it within a hundredth of a millimeter. In the space of, what was that, 20 or 30 seconds? I used to put uh, keys on the underside of the vise thinking it would save me time, but it was a pain when I slid it on and off the T-slots, you know, because you'd, it's not a smooth surface to slide it on and to put an anti-rust coating on. Eventually I removed them. If you've got the process, Correct, it only takes a few seconds to dial it in each time and it's a perfect job for a lever indicator. It's used as a comparator and so it doesn't matter whether it's imperial or metric, um, you're just using it to compare the position from one end to the other. These lever or finger type indicators are not really designed for doing accurate linear measurement. They're designed to give high access, high convenience for comparator type measurement, for getting things running parallel and concentric. And so the actual linear measurement is not highly accurate. I mean, Gaurav Test openly admit to the deviation here. Um, and so it's an accepted uh, issue with a lever indicator. And um, you can see here, it's compounded even more if the stylus stem is on an angle and there's a, a correction factor for each angle so that you can get a bit closer for actual linear uh, measuring. But they're not ideally meant for that. They are really comparators. Um, but I, I hesitate to do this test because it's not highly re relevant. But you know, a lot of people that review these indicators do test with slip gauges and things. And it's a bit pointless really. But I set it up um, here. Uh, on either side of uh, close to a Heidenhain digital readout here and I've got the screen up there so it should be quite accurate mounted directly above that digital readout I've got them both on zero and if I wind round exactly to a millimeter you can see there it's on half a millimeter because I'm on a diameter so you can see there very slight errors the Gyrod test is about a hundredth of a millimeter out. The Shahi happens to be bang on. So they're pretty good, you know, for measuring small distances, they're pretty accurate. And there we can see the diameter is on one millimeter. So they should each be reading uh, half a millimeter. But you know, that's all depending on how well it's set up with the angles of the stylus. And um, it's very easy to get something slightly wrong. And then there's the thorny question of what resolution dial indicator do you buy? You can get them in hundredths of a millimeter or half a thou's, approximately the same. Half thou's, one thou split into two. Or you get, get them in a tenth of a thou or uh, uh, microns, I suppose, would be the metric equivalent. Well, my thoughts on it are that um, for workshop use, um, you want as much uh, ease of use as possible and so a coarser indicator for setting uh, work in a chuck or clocking a vice up is a lot quicker as long as it's fine enough to do your finest work and if your tolerances are uh, most workshops 
won't be working closer than quarter of a thou or half a hundredth. So you need to be able to see quarter of a thou or half a hundredth of movement. And um, with these one hundredths indicators, which is approximately the same as half a thou, um, you can quite easily see uh, two microns, even one micron of movement. So I don't really see the need for workshop use to go finer than that. Um, you know, you can see with your eye uh, one or two microns there quite easily, and you've got a nice uh, capacity of measurement and ease of use. Uh, and for most jobs, you're not even working closer than a uh, quarter of a thou or a uh, half a hundredth. And so that sort of resolution of dial indicator, I think, is more practical. Well, I've taken the side plates off these dial indicators. Let's have a look inside them at the uh, engine room. And um, the Shahi Chinese indicator looks superficially quite good. Um, and the Swiss dial indicator, the Gyrod test, also looks superficially quite good. Let's have a really close inspection. And I've studied it for about 10 minutes. And I can see that the Gyrod test is of a higher quality. The body looks like it's machined out of stainless steel. It's anti-magnetic and it's been machined, so it's probably stainless steel. You can see there's little red uh, bearings there, which is probably um, ruby bearings. And uh, the quality of the staking of the sides of the gearbox is very high. Uh, I can't really fault it. Um, I'm not a watchmaker and I can't uh, give you a, a highly uh, experienced review, but it looks very good. By comparison, the Chinese Shahi looks good superficially, but if you look really closely, you begin to see the flaws, and you really need to, to look at it for about 10 minutes. And then I slowly began to see that, well, okay, it's a good quality die casting, probably an aluminium alloy. The side plates are not as well staked on. Um, the uh, bearings are not rubies. Um, the quality of the fasteners and um, various other little details are not the same. The screw heads are slightly burred on the main uh, stylus pivot bearing. And slowly you begin to see that, no, it's not in the same league. It's quite a good quality Chinese dial indicator and it has a lovely feel. It seems to work well and that's obviously important but um, it's not in the same league as this Swiss dial indicator from Gyrod Tast or however that is pronounced. Well I wanted to check my assumption that uh, the Shahi body is aluminium alloy um, but I think it is actually um, a material like stainless steel uh, because I've tried to scratch test it with a very hard grade of aluminium, 7075. That's about as tough as mild steel and I can't scratch the Shahi body. So it, even though it is uh, die cast of some, and by the looks of it, you can see the ejector pin marks and so on. They've got some method of uh, die casting a very tough uh, metal, perhaps stainless steel. So uh, I take back that, that criticism. Um, and, and, and also the Garo test is not aluminium. It's very tough as well. It easily scratches 7075 aluminium. So it's harder than the hardest grade of aluminium. So I'm presuming that that is also some type of stainless steel. So I just pulled the side cover off the uh, Mitutoyo and while I've got my eye in, had a bit of a look at that. And um, it's, it's nicely made. It's um, perhaps not quite to the high, same class as the Swiss dial indicator, but it does have some dual bearings and, uh, and it looks like it's machined internally rather than die cast. I can't see any uh, ejector pin marks. Um, the fasteners and some of the details aren't quite up to the standard of the Swiss, but uh, so it's somewhere in between the Chinese Shahi and the Swiss 
gyro test. Well let's have a look at the quality of the mounting hardware. Here we have the gyro test with the dovetail clamp and you can see there is a very good proportion of engagement. It's very accurate. But if you look on the Chinese Shahi here it's nowhere near the same. See that is very poor. Yeah, you can see there it's got nowhere near the amount of engagement. It's really only gripping on by its fingernails. And I noticed this, this problem with a lot of Chinese tools. Even the better quality ones, they're inconsistent with their quality. Some parts of the tool are of high quality and other parts are of low quality. I'm not sure why that is. Are they sourcing components from different suppliers and they're getting inconsistent quality. The, the Swiss and the Japanese give you much more consistent quality. Alright, thanks for watching guys. Let me know in the comments any thoughts you have on the subject. Cheers.